Good afternoon. We are again here to have the last session of our fatty liver and today our topic of discussion is fatty liver and men. Yeah. So Farah, tell me, last time we discussed that how women health gets affected due to fatty liver. Correct. So today I would like you to throw some light on fatty liver and men. Why do more men have seen to be getting fatty liver compared to women? So Seema, severity and prevalence both are high in, uh, in male for fatty liver in comparison to the women. Why so? Because Seema, there are two kinds of fatty liver. One okay. is alcoholic and mm -hmm. one is non-alcoholic. So we are talking about non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases from our first series. So today I will give you a small brief of uh, alcoholic fatty liver also because alcoholic fatty liver disease is very very common in men and why it is common in men one reason is intake of alcohol so more than two drinks every day if anybody is taking and their liver uh, and their lipid parameters and sugar parameters are on the higher side they must go and check their fatty liver Okay. So one is this and second is our common non thing yeah. is non-fatty liver diseases. So for non-fatty liver diseases, we consider men who have obesity or overweight, diabetes or insulin resistance or increased triglycerides, increased um, low density lipoprotein which is LDL. When these three things are there, they must check their fatty liver because these people have fatty liver diseases. So, in comparison to men and women, 19% women have lower uh, chances of getting fatty liver in comparison to men. But what bracket of women do you feel get affected by this non-alcoholic fatty liver? So Seema, basically these 19% we consider a female who got menopause. Only oh. those females uh, are on the higher side of getting the non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases. Also Seema, lifestyle. Lifestyle matters a lot and in men's um, I mean, we can see in our daily practice that men have um, erratic uh, eating habits. Yeah, you're right. Huh? Now we are thinking ki main ye healthy drink pee raha hoon. I'm having only the fruits, fruit juices or mixed fruit platters. So this fructose is also not very good for fatty liver diseases and it, the, the fructose may increase fatty liver disease, the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Okay, now in between as you mentioned that after menopause women are seen to have non-alcoholic fatty liver. That means hormones have a role to play. Correct. So in context to this, I would ask you a question. Is, is men's health, hormonal health, health in fact also gets affected if they have non-alcoholic fatty liver? Why not Seema? It is again correlated. Oh. Obesity. Obesity, diabetes. In dono ke beech mein, insulin resistance. And as I told you, increased triglycerides and increased LDL. It affects on visceral fat. Jesse jesse visceral fat, liver fat increase hoga. Sabse important uh, male hormone is testosterone. Ubo deteriorate uski quality and quantity dono deteriorate hona shuru ho jayenge aur jaise wo deteriorate hoga sperm counts kam honge sperm counts honge so females mein waise infertility is very very common but when you have NF NFLD or alcoholic fatty liver diseases it impacts on the testosterone and sperm counts and it can give infertility even to 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 the male oh that's a very important point yeah He's not to other environmental issues apart from that non-alcoholic fatty liver also has a major role to play in hormonal health in men yes it's very very important i mean sometimes male, males think that it's only the female who has hormonal issues but yes testosterone deteriorated quantity and quality of this, uh, testosterone it's directly connected with 
liver function, uh, liver fatty liver diseases, obesity, insulin resistance, and diabetes. Okay, Farag, there's another question just came to my mind when you were talking about this uh, fatty liver. That is waist circumference. Yes. So generally we see men are generally have a very bigger waist circumference. Is that is also related to non-alcoholic fatty liver? Yes, uh, waist circumference is also one of the parameter we can consider for for obesity or for overweight. Usually we have seen that the whole body is fine. Only our males have a waist circumference. There are pot bellies and there are bellies. So, उधर भी बहुत जरूरी है that one should do first do the lifestyle modification and we also should correct our exercises etc. Oh yeah, yeah. it's a wonderful point. One should note that yeah. that how men's health gets affected by non-alcoholic fatty liver. Yes. So Seema, now I have a question for you. Is fatty liver related to metabolic syndromes? Yeah. Firstly, I would like to tell you what is metabolic syndrome. Yeah. When somebody has four major issues like high blood glucose levels, which is also known as high blood sugars, high triglycerides, which we call as TGL, low HDL, which is good cholesterol, and high blood pressure. All these four components together form metabolic syndrome. Fine? So apart from that, if you are obese, then definitely it's adding to this metabolic syndrome. Now since we are discussing non-alcoholic fatty liver, I would like to tell you a connection between metabolic syndrome and non-alcoholic fatty liver. Okay. What happens is, because of this liver fatty, sorry, fatty liver, there are high triglycerides, the liver is overworking and there is a high blood glucose level. Because fatty liver is there, blood glucose levels are rising, high triglyceride is happening and you are leading towards metabolic syndrome. Okay, okay. Uh, so Seema, it's like increased sugars uh, or fasting blood sugar? Yeah, fasting or can be random also. Okay, mm -hmm. and lipids, so yes. triglycerides. Yes. And third is? High blood pressure, high blood pressure, and okay. even HDL, yeah, and even low HDL, HDL, low HDL, which is good cholesterol. Okay, yes. good to know. Yeah. So all these together, these four components form non-alcohol, sorry, metabolic yes. syndrome. And if an individual has any two components on the higher side, that means ya to blood sugar is bada hua hai or high blood pressure hai, but definitely you have fatty liver, which is leading to metabolic syndrome. Okay, got it. Okay, so Seema, now my next question uh, for you is, which diet can help to reduce the fatty liver? Yeah, since we are... I, I think this is a very important question <laughs> because we are nutritionists, so we, we have to take this question. Yes, so diet is a very important thing. Firstly, we need to do healthy eating. When I talk about healthy eating, it is balanced diet. And when you talk about balanced diet, the most important thing is you need to have a sensible portions. So portions, I mean, Seema, sometimes when we say portion, so people say, okay, I am eating less, but still I have this issue. So what exactly, I mean, how we check the portion? Yeah, it's very difficult to decide on day to day basis because someday you like something, you eat more. Someday you don't like something, you don't eat. Yeah. So in that case, our program, Metabolic Balance, really helps. Here we generally take a person's medical history, food choices, yeah. his entire blood issues, and we get a plan formulated. It's a personalized plan. And in this plan, the person portions needed for metabolism correction. Correct. So it's like insulin correction also. Yeah. And that is how a portion control, I will not use the word control because yeah. control has a different meaning for everybody. I mean sensible portions of food one needs to take. Another important thing is having complete gap between meals. What happens is we have a good breakfast, a good lunch and a good dinner. But in between we keep eating little here and there. 
especially last week when it was Diwali. Yeah. There was dry fruits in the house. There were so many different kind of sweets, sweets. in the house. Everybody oh, was munching. Yeah, one piece of nut or maybe one kaju or one small barfi we were eating. Thinking ki this will not add to my weight. But this eating in between meals, in between breakfast and lunch, we recommend a gap of 5 hours. So Farah, can you throw this light, throw light on this? Ki why we need five hours gap? Yeah. So see, a five hours gap is is necessary first to correct the insulin, to correct the uh, insulin resistance, and the gap. When we are giving the gap, our body releases glucagon, which is very very important because this glucagon help to first feel you full. And when you are feeling full, you can maintain the gap. And maintaining of gap means you are drinking only water. And that doesn't include the coconut water or detox water or green teas, etc. Because when we are explaining this to our clients, we have to keep we explain them that diet coke, cokes or sherbet or juices, these are all out. Hai. But then they, they think ki, okay, healthy drinks. Healthy drink is coconut water. Healthy drink is green tea. Ki bhai green tea peenge to fat melt hoga, blah 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 things. But it's not like that. Five hours break means plain pani, that's it. No munching just to correct the insulin because once you are correcting the insulin, then you are actually targeting your fat, visceral fat bhi tabhi correct hoga jab aap apna insulin correction karenge. Very well explained. Another important thing is when we keep having these small, small things in between, it leads to indigestion. We yeah. start getting burps. We start feeling acidic. And on top of it, we keep taking lot of supplements. We'll take some antacid, we'll take vitamin B supplements, we take so many supplements and what happens, these supplements will also get digested in the liver. They will release toxins and further cause extra load on the liver. So by eating extra food, you are asking for extra supplements and these supplements along with extra food are definitely affecting your liver. So please maintain 5 hours gap between breakfast, lunch, lunch and dinner. But since there is a long gap between lunch and dinner, you can have a cup of tea or coffee, something in the evening. Another important thing is that bitter foods. Yeah, bitter, bitter foods. foods like karela, which are easily available now, it's a season. Muli, muli ke patte, they really help in reversal of non-alcoholic fatty liver. Apart from that, rocket leaves are there. Whichever all these things... Moringa. Things, moringa is... Yeah. Uh, sare logo ko pata hai, moringa leaves be both helpful hai. Bitter bhi hai and it is good for the liver uh, uh, things, liver disease. Yeah. So when it comes to healthy diet, clean eating, sensible portions, you need to have only water, maintain 5 hours gap, avoid sugary drinks, Take all bitter vegetables. These will definitely help in reversal of non-alcoholic fatty liver. Yeah. So with this, I think Seema, today we are finishing our fatty liver uh, series. Yeah, definitely. So if you wanted to see us fatty liver disease from our first episode till today, you can contact us anytime to our website or you can subscribe our channel on YouTube. Yeah, and since from 1st November it is Diabetes Month, so next month we will be addressing a very very important topic which is Diabetes. And since India is the second largest capital when it comes to Diabetes, so please join us again same time next Monday and we'll be taking on Diabetes. diabetes. Any queries, any information, if you want to share or want to ask, please send us the questions. We will love to address them. Thank you.